Welcome to the first edition of Autism A to Z. I'm Thomas Henley, and this is a bite-sized overview of the many autism concepts and terminologies that you may come across on your autism educational journey. Today's topic is autism or autism spectrum disorder. Autism is a neurodevelopmental condition, meaning that you're born with it. It has a strong genetic component and is characterized by difficulties or differences in social behavior, communication, sensory profiles, and rigidity. In the most recent CDC study, they showed that around 1 in 33 individuals or children were diagnosed with autism. Autism is best characterized as a spectrum of traits, but it's not the same as the ASD or autism spectrum disorder profiling that you may see. In terms of diagnosis, each autistic person is given a label or a number between 1 and 3, ASD1, ASD2 and ASD3. The level increases based on the strength of that person's autistic traits, the kind of support needs that they have and the level of functioning that they have in their day-to-day -day living. Asperger's used to be a diagnosis that a lot of people tended to get, but now that the DSM, so the Diagnostical Statistical Manual of Mental Health has changed, they've basically smushed all of these floating diagnoses into one thing, Autism Spectrum Disorder. Individuals who are ASD1 usually have average or above average intelligence, but they aren't void of any difficulties or struggles or differences related to how they conduct themselves in life. These difficulties are usually social in nature, it can be to do with communication, sometimes related to rigidity, so that aspect of needing a routine or needing some, some level of certainty or perhaps having a different focusing style. And this is where I would lie in terms of that ASD profiling. Interestingly, a lot of people who are ASD1 can go their entire lives not realizing that they're autistic. And this tended to happen a lot in the older generations, so you may find a lot of people kind of getting on in terms of age in life who are autistic but they're just undiagnosed and some people prefer to self-diagnose or self-identify meaning that they don't go for a formal autism assessment but they do identify with the label and choose to learn and be a part of the autistic community the reason why they may go undiagnosed is likely a result of their ability to mask autism something that's seen a lot more in asd1 individuals meaning that we can assimilate or camouflage into daily life, or perhaps even our autistic traits, which would have been picked up by the right person, have just gone unnoticed, with people labeling them as personality traits or unique quirks or differences, rather than being autistic. These difficulties can span across multiple domains in life, from work to school to relationships. And these autistic people also have much, much higher rates of mental illness when compared to the general population. Many individuals who are diagnosed ASD1 or perhaps Asperger's back in the day, like myself, do go on to live full, independent lives. Some of which developing unique skills, positive traits, or specialisms which they may or may not utilize in the working world. On the other side of the profile lies ASD3, or what's now deemed as profound autism. These individuals tend to have very, very significant support needs. They're also pretty likely to have some kind of profound intellectual disability, which definitely contributes to their inability to live independently. These individuals tend to require 24-7 support, or at least supported living, depending on the person. And contrary to popular belief from films like Rain Man, the large majority of these individuals do not have any special skills or superpowers, like is seen in this characterization of the savant. Here are three misconceptions, three common misconceptions about autism. Number one, we lack empathy, the ability to relate and care about another human being. Autistic people do not lack empathy, but we may have some difficulty in reading and understanding other people's emotional state unless expressed directly. Empathy is very subjective too, and both autistic and non-autistic individuals can have a difficulty in relating 
and empathizing with the other side. And this concept is termed double empathy. Number two, we are all on the spectrum. Many, many people take online autism tests and get a score. They get a score out of a certain number and so they determine that this is how autistic they are, which is a very wrong way of looking at these types of tests. And even when looking at formal official autism diagnosis, it's more designed to catch the autistic people to determine the probability of that person being autistic rather than to determine how autistic they are. People who aren't autistic can have autistic traits, but when looking at an autism diagnosis, they need to have different elements and traits to a certain degree of strength to a point at which it can affect someone's functioning in varying different areas on this diagnosis profile because they're trying to catch the autistic people, not diagnose or indicate how autistic somebody is. Number three, everyone is autistic these days. The increase in autism diagnosis is likely not a result of the tests becoming a lot more lenient or the fact that autism is increasing in the population. We're just getting a lot better at spotting the signs. And due to developments in diagnosis of autism, but also increased autism education and awareness, a lot of people who have been misdiagnosed or a lot of people who have been undiagnosed for a large portion of their life are suddenly becoming a lot more exposed to autism content. With exposure comes a lot of awareness, comes a lot of intrigue, and for some people who have gone this amount of time being undiagnosed, I've realized that perhaps they should go for a diagnosis just to check if they are autistic or not. Autism has also been thought to be a largely male-dominated condition for a long period of time. It's only recently that the rates have been adjusted for, but new research has delved into autism in women, suggesting that autistic women have been flying under the radar of diagnosis for a long time due to their differences in presentation, particularly related to autistic masking, but also past blind spots and stereotypes within autism research. So autism is multifaceted and highly individual. And that's not even factoring in the differences generally from human to human related to their personality, their environments. And the crossover between autism and other psychological diagnoses can be pretty significant. I'm talking things like ADHD, anxiety disorders, gastrointestinal issues, gender dysphoria, and much, much more. So to give a concise overview of what it means to be autistic is a very tall task indeed. But if you have enjoyed this relatively shorter video on autism and want to dive deeper into the world of autism, I highly recommend checking out this video, which goes in detail into a lot of different aspects related to autism. Or if you prefer these shorter, concise videos, consider liking and subscribing to get updated on these future editions. See you next time.